The Anthony and Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence is an exciting regional program which seeks out the best of the region's people doing work in science, art, entrepreneurship, and civic activism. Earlier this year, the awards hosted its 11th prize-giving ceremony in Barbados, honoring four remarkable Caribbean people. This is the first time these awards have been held in the Eastern Caribbean outside Trinidad. That the 2019 Caribbean Awards for Excellence be given here in Barbados is uniquely appropriate. The Caribbean Awards program seeks to harness native genius to tackle the region's pressing problems of economic underdevelopment, poverty, and social issues. They honor and advance our developing needs as societies of the 21st century. The second service that the awards render is in their Caribbean outreach, acknowledging our oneness as a society. And while the ceremony is being staged here for the first time, Barbados is no stranger to the Caribbean Awards for Excellence. From these shores, Dr. James Husbands in 2008 became the first laureate in science and technology. And in 2013, Dr. Anselm Hennes was also inducted in the same category. This year, we're proud to add another inductee and recognize the excellence of the people from Barbados. In 2019, the four remarkable Caribbean people awarded are Jamaican climate scientist, Professor Michael Taylor, Barbadian civic activist, Corey Lane, Trinidadian filmmaker, Danielle Dufantala, Jamaican media entrepreneur, Kamala Bennett. Each of the laureates was presented with a check for half million TT dollars to assist in future work. But the work these remarkable people have already done is more than many lesser mortals have spent a lifetime doing. Take Professor Taylor, a climate scientist from Jamaica. Climate science affects the region profoundly, but does not have a prominent profile. Taylor is a leading global figure in the field. He is an architect of the 1.5 to stay alive movement, which has been adopted as the official target for a rise in global temperature by the International Panel for Climate Change. The worst case scenario is that we don't take this seriously enough, that we think that climate change is something for somebody else to deal with, you know, or that we don't need to put climate change consideration in all our development planning. If we don't, well, we already see it. climate is, you know, moving at a faster pace than we are. And so you get that kind of devastation um, that you saw across the Eastern Caribbean in 2017, you know, that we can't easily or quickly recover from. The best case scenario to me would be you know, if we in fact take on the, the mitigation, adaptation and education programs and, you know, work out the modalities and each mo to, to implement them. And I've been careful here because clearly within each country, how you take it on will differ depending on the context. But if, if you take it on according to your situation and context, I think we would see transformed economies. Taylor teaches at the UWI Mona and spends much time preparing the region for an inevitability it doesn't seem to want to confront. The disruption from climate change, which is happening now in health, economics, food security, and even housing. A lot of Michael's uh, work really uh, extends and makes available climate information to uh, social science to the social science community to help uh, support planning decision making uh, and it, so it moves a lot of the work out of the, the science realm into really the applications realm and where you can actually uh, use the information to make decisions uh, about uh, society 
Professor Taylor's leadership has been one we would describe as transformational. It is through his leadership that we have expanded and engaged more with communities, have designed tools under his guidance, and have engaged a number of stakeholders so that persons understand more how the climate has changed and how it will impact livelihoods. It's through his leadership that we have engaged government and different parties on how we respond to climate change and the need to have it on our deve developmental agenda continually. Taylor has a vital message which is critical to the region's survival, but his effort would be for naught if the message isn't seen and felt by many people. Making the message beautiful and compelling is the specialty of another Jamaican, Kimala Bennett, a media and advertising entrepreneur whose Limas and Bards, the lab, has revolutionized Jamaican advertising. Trained in the U.S. as a filmmaker, she returned to Jamaica in the early 2000s to find the infrastructure and mindsets in need of updating. It was a bit of a reality check because having interned at HSI, you know, I saw how they did these, you know, I guess multi-million dollar music videos. When I came back, it wasn't quite set up for that. So I called up my, you know, two friends at the time who always worked with me. So Trisha was my producer informally in all these music videos and Melissa, at the time did a lot of styling for us. And I said, guys, I'm gonna start a company, all three of us, and we're just gonna take over the industry. Um, they were not as enthused as I was about it. She might not have taken over the industry, but she certainly changed it. After winning a bid to design a campaign for Grace Kennedy, one of the oldest brands in Jamaica, she was able to convince them she was the right choice. I would be less than honest if I didn't say that there were some concerns amongst the team. Uh, who would have been working with the, the more mature agency because we were with them for a long time and we had a, an agency that was led by someone so new and fresh and uh, fresh and young um, and uh, obviously inexperienced. Her agenda was not restricted to business but teaching young people the value of ideas and action. She wanted to share her secrets and enable others to make their own paths to success. So she wrote a manual for young entrepreneurs and took her message directly to them. One of the things that we did for a few years was called the I Am The Change program, an entrepreneurship uh, program in schools that are severely underserved and challenged. Kimala and I spent mornings and, and many late nights conceptualizing this program, um, which saw us taking 100 students to camp for a week immersing them in skills in entrepreneurship and um, then they went back into their schools and started their businesses and we tracked them and coached them and gave them support for about eight months. The attempt to reach and transform the lives of those less fortunate is a seemingly ubiquitous need through the Caribbean. Many young people are feeling left out of contemporary life and are more and more resorting to crime. This is not a moral issue, according to Corey Lane, a youth activist from Barbados. It is a social one. He founded the Nature Fun Ranch, which has transformed the lives of more than 2,000 young Barbadians. One of the things that was common among my friends at 15 years old and working in the prison and the school system is this whole idea is nobody cares about me. So they believe as though parents don't care about us, society, church, school, nobody cares about us. I'm a failure. I take an exam at 11 and about 70, 80 percent of them are told that they're failures. Not that they fail the exam, but they are failures. And then they are dumped. And yes, you use the word dumped. Into certain schools with persons that believe and act the same way. And they go through their entire lives feeling like failures. Lane is also a radio talk show host in Barbados, and one of the topics he focuses on is that poverty is not inevitable and can be defeated. One of the things I realize of people that build wealth is that it starts in the mind. Poverty is a state of a mind and not a state of your bank account. And that speaks to the whole idea of understanding how money works, understanding how wealth works, understanding confidence, having confidence in yourself that you can do it, not that you're born poor and you must die poor. So those are the things I'm working on. Corey has exhibited his commitment to being able to help stop poor people from being poor. And indeed, that is why I took, and with great pleasure, appointed him recently as my special advisor on poverty alleviation and the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. When Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II conferred on Corey the Commonwealth Point of Light Award, we were all very happy and knew that it was well deserved. 
Lane's message is powerful and transformative, but people, young and old, are moved to behave in certain ways and to imitate models because of the powerful media of film and television. This is something that Daniel Defentala, a television producer and director from Trinidad and Tobago, knows well. Her career has been shaped by a single credo to show Caribbean people to themselves, both as they are and as they could be. When I was about 13, we left Trinidad. My stepfather was a diplomat and, and we got posted to Kenya. Through all of our um, travels, because after Kenya it was Sudan, it was London, it was um, Toronto, it was France. Um, and um, one summer after coming, coming home and, uh, to Trinidad, um, I turned on the TV and there was this after school special that looked, everybody on it looked like me. And I thought, oh my God. Oh my God, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. I have to do that. I have to be there. She has done this through music videos, documentaries, and drama series from the 1990s to the present, which have added to the region's repertoire of self-knowledge. At the time, we were used to TV series dealing with more with working class folk scenes, uh, folk scenarios. And Daniel decided to do a series, a very successful series, on the middle class. Um, group in Trinidad and Tobago. Most filmmakers hadn't really dealt with them because um, the, the, somehow they weren't seen to be part of the psyche of Trinidad and Tobago. This was the series Westwood Park. One of the things I think that she's done is actually allowed us to, to begin to see, or at least begin to allow Trinidadians to see themselves. So unconsciously perhaps what Westwood Park does is that it does give you an insight into the kinds of relationships between the classes and the way in which maybe um, people from different classes think about each other. So I really think we as a public private sector need to invest in images of ourselves, all kinds of images. I'm not saying it has to be positive and unrealistic, all images of ourselves. The latest series, now in development, takes an unsparing look at the gang culture which has pervaded the region since the turn of the century. These four people have among them a basket of crucial skills, and if their ambitions are allowed to progress and evolve, the result could be transformative. This is the long-term aim of the Anthony N. Sabla Caribbean Awards for Excellence. The awards program was formed in 2006 by Trinidadian businessman, the late Dr. Anthony N. Sabka. We at the Anson McCall Foundation feel there's more to building a nation than bricks, steel, and asphalt. We feel ideas, human potential, and creativity are important too. And this is where our foundation seeks to make its contribution. Our purpose with these awards is to achieve two goals. First, to make the Caribbean people aware that the science, art, civic, and entrepreneurial ideas that will build better societies are right here all around us. And secondly, to find those people who embody that promise and provide them with an award which will assist them in their research and projects to create the means to build and transform our society. And since then, the program has been seeking out gifted Caribbean people. Since 2006, a growing number of scientists, artists, writers, civic activists, and entrepreneurs have been crossing stages from Guyana to Jamaica and the islands in between to be inducted into the College of ANSA Caribbean Laureates. This is one of the few times the Caribbean has been unified in such a tangible, meaningful way by bringing its best minds together. One of the earliest laureates was Barbadian solar energy entrepreneur, James Husband. The Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence is the region's greatest private sector contribution to the acknowledgement of effort of Caribbean people in arts and letters, entrepreneurship, public and civic contribution, and science and technology. 
the distinguishing difference of the Anthony N. Sabka Caribbean Awards for Excellence is that prize money is given to the laureates to help them fulfill, fulfill their dreams. That is a huge differentiator. Taking your work forward requires resources. Usually, money helps. I express heartful thanks that I was selected as the ANSCAF Laureate in Science and Technology in 2008. It has provided me with recognition regionally and internationally. It came at the right time. It was a confidence booster and remains a confidence booster. At a personal level, the award made me feel empowered to achieve greater heights and to continue our journey to make our product the best in the hemisphere and one of the best in the world. Apart from enhancing careers and thereby the region's productive and professional capacities, the awards also give the region a needed and deserved shot of self-esteem. This award is significant because all too often we look to the outside to validate us before we acknowledge our own excellence. It's encouraging to those of us who have chose to remain and commit ourselves to building our industries in our region, and hopefully this fuels the creative fires of generations to come. This award gives me renewed energy to continue to fight to ensure that the Caribbean stories and images leave an indelible mark on this world and especially in this ever-evolving, rapidly evolving and increasingly noisy world of media. I stand before you truly humbled to say that in being named Anthony Sabga Laureate for Excellence in Entrepreneurship, I have taken my first step on the moon. I want to thank our patron, Mr. Norman Sabka, and the entire ANSA team for giving us, within the region, this beautifully crafted platform to show our value and to inspire others to action. I must thank the Anthony N. Sagba Caribbean Awards for Excellence on a personal level for facilitating this and making this possible but also because I think it is important that we can look inward and reward excellence from inward because I believe that unwittingly and subconsciously a lot of these great awards come externally and it reinforces again unwittingly an inferiority and a superiority that does not need to be reinforced. I have fallen into a state of head shaking and I think I speak for Daniel Kimal and Corey too that we shake our heads because the truth of the matter is we do what we do because we are convinced it is what we were gifted and purposed for and it is our small contribution to the region. But by far the most profound effect is on the gifted individuals who work often without recognition for our collective salvation. You see, every now and then, a real sense of determination comes to the fore, inspired by this award, to simply continue doing my very best. To do my best to live up to the legacy of contribution of the past winners, like Dr. Husband. Enormous as that challenge is, to do my best to continue trying in my chosen field of science to create the kind of future Caribbean that is livable for my children. Thank you, Answer Caribbean Awards, for inspiring a sense of determination to continue what we do and to do it well. My mind's made up. Please accept my immense thanks. That any of this is possible at all is due to the enlightenment of Answer McCall, whose roots are in Trinidad and Tobago, but whose branches sway over the Caribbean. The awards are funded by the Ansa McCall Foundation, which is a Trinidad-based business conglomerate which has business interests throughout the region. Barbados boasts of a proud and significant impact on our region and has supplied the world with phenomenal array of scholars, professionals, artists, musicians, sportsmen and leaders a contribution that all should be proud of, regardless of which island we call home. The Ansemacal Group 
has had a presence in Barbados for over 97 years and we consider ourselves to also be Bajans. There's a proverb and I quote, generation after generations will live on our dreams. What we do and say today will have an impact on whatever happens tomorrow, end of quotation. This proverb embodies everything that these awards stand for. By honoring those of today that create a powerful and inspirational change that will impact the lives of generations to come, we hope to not only congratulate them on their achievements, but more so to inspire others to follow in their footsteps. You are the one that makes me strong. All these years you never let me go. So I have for you your gratitude. Things you do get me closer to you. When I make me feel like it's family. Miss you.